Python party people, funky friends, circuit squad, and those who get down with GitHub. It's Professor Gallagher, and in the next two lessons, I'm going to show you how you can create a disco button to bring defunct to any room. Like many faculty, I've seen fewer students visiting my office post-COVID, but I've tried to make my office even more fun to stop by. A tap of the disco button starts your groove of choice. The button is built using a Raspberry Pi Pico W and CircuitPython. A potentiometer lets you dial the tune and it shows in the OLED display. Then a press starts the LED goodness. The button sends a message over Wi-Fi to other Picos in the room. Two Pico Ws control the LED light strips and run animations from the Adafruit LED animations library. One Pico W has an SD card attached and it's loaded with disco songs, plus an audio jack so it can play the requested tunes. And another Pico W has a relay switch that turns the light projector on and off. I've got code and other files on a GitHub repo so that you can easily copy the project and make it your own, and I'll walk you through the code so you can understand what's going on and where you can make any changes you'd like. The first lesson covers the disco button which publishes or sends messages, and the second lesson covers subscribers that receive or react to messages. So let's code that funky python. And just a quick note if you're new here, all the content for the university physical computing course that I teach will take you from new to programming through robotics, and it's on my YouTube channel with slides, challenges, and solutions also available on a Google Drive. Dig in, tell others, and let me know if you find the content useful. Now let's make the awesome. The project works using MQTT, an open standard for the Internet of Things that's used to send messages between devices. In IoT speak, a publisher sends messages, subscribers receive and can react to those messages, and a broker is in the middle, forwarding publisher messages to subscribers. In this build, the disco button is the publisher, pressing a button sends a message to run an LED animation and play a song, Adafruit I.O., which is free, acts as a broker, and I've got subscriber code running on devices that run LED animations, play a selected song, and turn on the disco projector. Here's how I built this. The hardware used for the disco button includes a Raspberry Pi Pico W with headers soldered on, an Adafruit 60mm large arcade button, I use the white one, an OLED Stemma QT monochrome display, this is the 0.91 inch 128 by 32 character model, you'll also want a Stemma QT cable for this, a panel mount 10k potentiometer and knob, a strip of NeoPixel lights. I've got 54 lights in this project and I use a strip with 60 lights per meter, but make sure that you've got your measurements right if you're going to use lights and you're laser cutting a housing, since sizes of different NeoPixel strips do vary. And I soldered these components to a Perma Proto half size breadboard. You'll also see I used standard maker supplies when putting this together, like solder, wires, hot glue, and heat shrink. Now before assembly, I always recommend that you test out your components. I usually use this with a standard breadboard before soldering things up. I usually alligator clip the components before soldering the wire. So here's the build diagram so you can see how I wired things up. And this wiring works with the code. So remember, if you change any of the pin numbers, you're going to have to change the code too. Now the large arcade button has an LED light inside it that's just a plain single color LED, not an RGB LED. Now unfortunately I didn't have a diagram for our button with an LED light inside of it, so I've shown it here with two separate components, one for the button and one for the LED light, just know that the LED light is inside the button housing. So there are four terminals to connect wires to this button. The terminals that run vertically are for the button itself to detect a press or release. And buttons don't have polarity, so you can use either of these terminals for the signal or ground. I have my signal wire here in the yellow at the top. I have that going to pin GP15, and the ground is in the terminal that's aligned below this. This wire here, that can go to any ground. Now again, this button has an LED light, and LEDs do have polarity. So you'll want to test this out to make sure that you're attaching the anode side to your signal pin. Otherwise, the light won't go on. So oriented this way, this side here is the anode or signal side. I have that wired in orange, and that's going to GP14. And the ground for the LED is right across from it. Again, use any ground. Now the display is connected using Stemma QT, and we wire a Stemma QT port into the Pico with four wires. The standard wiring for the Pico is blue the SDA or data wire goes to GP4, yellow the SCL or clock wire goes to GP5, the red power wire goes to 3.3 volt out, not VBUS, and ground can go to any ground. Now the potentiometer is an analog device, you've got three analog pins to choose from on the Pico, 
I'm using pin A0, which is also GP26 here. Also make sure that you use 3.3 volt out for your power. The potentiometer should not go to VBUS power. This also has a ground. Again, any ground pin is fine. And finally, the NeoPixel strip. I've got the signal for that going to GP18. The power is connected to VBUS and ground for any ground. Now let me show you where you can get the code. You'll find it on GitHub at the repository at github.com slash Gallagher. Remember my name spelled with a U slash disco dash button. Those are all lowercase letters. And you see a lot in here. If you scroll down in the readme, you'll see wiring diagrams for the different builds. You'll see a list of components that I've used. There are several files in the repo, including an Adobe Illustrator file of the disco button enclosure in case you want to download that and laser cut your own. But the file we want to use right now to get the disco button working is this one named disco button publisher code.py. So click the link to open the page with that code on it. And I'll click on the copy icon here that will copy all of the code. And I'm assuming if you're watching this lesson that you've already got the Moo Python editor downloaded. You've also got a Raspberry Pi Pico that's configured with CircuitPython and you've got the needed libraries that are installed in your LIB folder. If not, and you're brand new to this, you can see some of the other lessons on the channel, but I'm gonna assume everybody watching this is all caught up. So here we are in Moo. I'm gonna paste this code into a new tab. And with your Raspberry Pi Pico plugged in, your computer should show that you've got a circuit pi volume i'm going to save this code to that volume as code.py and now let me walk you through the code and show you what it does and actually before we walk through the code remember that we're going to be using the free service adafruit io as the broker or middleman between our disco button which is the publisher that publishes messages and any picos that are subscribers that receive these messages and do things like animate the led lights in a neopixel strand or play a song now in earlier lessons we talked about how to set up your pico w for a wi Find network and how to create an Adafruit IO account at io.adafruit.com. And we pointed out that you need to set up a settings.toml file on your Pico, that's on your CircuitPy volume, that has your Wi Fi network name and password, your Adafruit IO username your access key for Adafruit IO. Once you sign up at io.adafruit.com, you can find that under the yellow key icon. And the port and broker identification information, the port should be 1883 and the broker should be the string io.adafruit.com. And again, if you haven't done this, there are lessons in our YouTube playlist that describe how to get this working, or you can quickly set this up right now based on what I'm showing you here, if you're comfortable with that. Now we've also got to do an additional step on Adafruit IO. We've got to set up two separate feeds. Now in an earlier lesson, we mentioned feeds are used to distinguish messages for a given project. So we're going to have one feed that says which NeoPixel animation should be triggered when a button is pressed, and another feed will contain the message of the song that we should play. So to set these feeds up, once you've got your account set up on io.adafruit.com, click on the Feeds tab, click New Feed. We're going to create one feed called Disco underscore Animation, all lowercase. And we're going to create another new feed. This one's going to be called Disco underscore Song underscore Name, all lowercase. And with that set up, let's head back over to Moo and take a look at the code that we just copied from GitHub. So we start off importing a bunch of libraries. We're using NeoPixel Digital I.O. for our button. These modules here are used for the display that we hook up via Stemma QT, and the analog in is for the potentiometer. And we've got libraries for working with Wi-Fi and MQTT. Now, if you went through our earlier exercises, the only thing that's new here are the libraries for working with a display. Next, we get our Adafruit IO username and key from the settings.toml file, and we set up variables that point to the two feeds that we've created, disco animation and disco song name. Now, when we work with MQTT, we need to create connected and disconnected functions. We need those regardless of whether we're coding a publisher or subscriber, but we don't need a message function here since that's used to receive messages, and we're just a publisher here. We're not a subscriber. Subscribers receive messages. Now these next blocks of code are standard for connecting to Wi-Fi based on whatever the settings are in settings.toml and we set up MQTT and we make sure that it knows how to connect and disconnect using the functions we've defined above. And we connect to the broker here and by this point we should be connected to Adafruit IO. Then we set up our potentiometer. This might be new code for you, but it sets up our display. Now, if you're using a different display than the one that I showed, then you're going to need different code here. So you should check with the Adafruit Learn Guide if you're using a different display. The code for different displays can vary. Now, we're also going to use two animations for the NeoPixel strip. When our button is pressed, we'll either show a solid animation, and we're going to do that in black, which will effectively turn all the lights off, or we're going to show the rainbow animation when we've turned things on, the rainbow 
animation has the different LEDs travel through a rainbow of colors. Then we'll also import the color wheel and we're gonna set our initial color to black. The NeoPixel strip that I've used in my build wraps around the housing twice and it uses 54 lights. I'm gonna set that up and pin GP18. I'll initially set things to black, meaning all lights are off. I set up two animations that I'm gonna use, solid and rainbow. Current animation is gonna be the variable that we use to hold the current animation to use for the LED. So it's either gonna be solid or rainbow. We're gonna start off with solid black. This bit of code here might be new, but what it does is it creates a display object. So we initially splash our display screen with nothing in it. Then we set up our button and we set up the LED light that's inside the button. We'll initially turn it off, that's false. Now this update text function might be unfamiliar to you, but what it does is it just takes the string that we pass in. For us, that string is gonna have two lines in it. The first one's gonna be the name of the song, and the second one's gonna be the band that performs that song, and it displays this on our display screen. For now, we're not gonna worry about the details of specifically how this works. We'll just know that it works great for the display that we're using. Now I've got four songs set up here. The backslash N is the line feed character. So each of these strings has a song name followed by another line that it's the band name, but it's all one string. Now make sure that you've got a wave file with the same name as that first line, which is the name of the song on the subscriber microcontroller, the Pico, that's gonna be playing that song. I'm gonna store these songs in an SD card that's attached to that Pico. So for me, I've got another Raspberry Pi Pico set up that's gonna act as a subscriber, and it's got the songs Disco Inferno, Boogie Wonderland, Play That Funky Music, and Staying Alive on its SD card. Now these are gonna be wave files, and the spelling and capitalization needs to be exact exactly as it's shown here. We'll talk about how to set up the subscriber and code it in the next lesson, but for now, let's continue with the publisher. Now what I do in this line is get the potentiometer reading. That's a number between zero and 65, 535. But what I wanna do is I wanna convert this to the number of songs. That's why I divide the length of the songs list by 65,536, which is one more than the number of values that can be returned by the potentiometer. I'm gonna get one reading for each song, and I take the value of the song, and I send that so that it can be displayed. Now the perform animation function will just run the next iteration of either solid, which turns the light solid black, meaning off, or rainbow, which moves the rainbow of colors through the NeoPixel strip. Now roll lights is a function that I've written to light up each pixel in the NeoPixel strip in order using a different color. I use this when the button is first pressed. I think this is a nice visual effect before abruptly starting the rainbow animation, which would otherwise just turn all the lights on at once. So here's an example of what this looks like when it runs. Again, we see those lights roll before the rainbow animation starts. Each of those lights turning on one by one is being performed by this roll lights function. I'm gonna call this just one time before we start running our rainbow animation. Now in our while true loop, I check to see if I'm connected to the MQTT broker, and if not, I try to reconnect to Wi-Fi and reconnect to Adafruit IO, my MQTT broker. Then I read the potentiometer and figure out what song I wanna show. For me, it's one of four songs, but if I added more songs to my songs list, this should consider how many songs I've got in that list because I use LEN, which is the length of the songs list right here. Now I keep track of the last song that's displayed, and if the song has changed, meaning the song is not the same as the last song that I wrote to the display, then I update the display with the current song and make that song the last song displayed. Then I check to see if the button was pressed. Now I call button update, which is used for debounced buttons. I want to record one press at a time, so debouncing is very important. And if the button is pressed, I turn the LED value to the opposite of what the current setting was, either true or false. Either this turns on or turns off the LED that's inside of the button. If the current animation is rainbow, then I switch it to solid and perform the animation once, which turns off all of the lights. It makes them solid black. Otherwise, I set the current animation to rainbow. Then I try to publish my messages. That means I send it to the Adafruit IO broker so that it can send that out to the subscribers. Now, the messages I'm gonna publish are gonna be one which sends out the current animation in the disco animation feed. And if my current animation is rainbow, I'm also gonna send out the song in the disco song name feed. Now this little chunk of code here with the split in it just sends out the first line of the song band name string. So just the song is sent. This also means you can't have two bands that play a song with the same name. And if I just set up the rainbow animation, I roll the lights just before the rainbow animation starts. 
Remember that just turns on all the lights one by one in different colors from the color wheel before all of the lights switch to running the rainbow animation. Now, if this doesn't work, I can't send those messages. An error or exception is thrown. Now, this almost certainly means that I've lost network connection. So what I try to do here is reconnect to Wi-Fi and reconnect to Adafruit IO. And then I try to publish those two messages once again, the animation and the song. Finally, if the current animation is rainbow, that's got to be updated with each pass in the loops. So we call perform animation, passing in the current animation, which will be rainbow, and that keeps the rainbow colors moving through the light strip. So if this works, this is what we're going to see. Now with each pass of the while true loop, we check our connection and reconnect if we need to, and we also check the potentiometer and update the display if we need to. When I press the button, we should see the LED light up inside the button that turns on. The initial animation was set to solid when we started up, so this changes to rainbow. We're going to try to send out the message saying rainbow on the disco animation feed and we'll send out the song name on the disco song feed we'll roll the light so that those lights turn on one by one now if this didn't work we'll try to reconnect to wi-fi and our broker and we'll try to send those two messages again and as long as the animation is rainbow we're going to continue to call perform animation to update the rainbow animation each time we make a pass in the while true loop cool now with each while true pass, we're gonna continue to check to see if the button was pressed. If it was pressed again, then we'll turn off the LED that's inside the button. We're gonna set the animation to solid and turn off all the lights in the NeoPixel light strip. We'll send the messages to the subscriber and that's how our code works. Now, even though there's a lot of code in here, you should be able to make some pretty minor adjustments if you wanted to send different subscriber messages. So this code absolutely can be reused and modified for other projects. Now, if you're curious, let me show you how I designed and assembled the final build of my disco button. I designed the case on the website makercase.com, then I exported the SVG file, imported it into Adobe Illustrator, added the holes for the button and its mount stems, the LED display, the potentiometer, LED lights, and a hole in the back for the USB cable that powers the build. I also added the text disco. Many laser cutters don't engrave fonts, so I needed to image trace the letters for engraving. Our laser cutter uses red for cutting lines and black for engraving, so the text is in black. Then I cut this on one of the Trotec laser cutters in our campus makerspace, used wood glue to glue the case together. Don't glue the top on though, it should be removable. Then you can see I strung the lights on the inside and hot glued them in place. I also hot glued the display. The potentiometer mounts with a screw on nut, but I carved a small divot on the inside of the build using a hobby knife to hold the potentiometer in place. And the button also screws in using a mounting ring. And with the Permaproto on its side, everything fits nicely in the case. So this lesson took us through the creation of our disco button, the publisher, and in our next lesson we'll show how to create subscriber code that reacts to these messages. Specifically, we'll show how to turn on LED light animations, play songs from an SD card, and turn a light projector on or off using a relay switch. Come back soon so we can continue to hack.